Hey guys, it's Hannah, and today I'm coming to you with a spoilery discussion video for a book that I'm so excited to talk about, and that is A Gathering of Shadows by V.E. Schwab. A Gathering of Shadows is the second book in the Shades of Magic trilogy by V.E. Schwab. I already have a full spoiler-free discussion for the first book, A Darker Shade of Magic, up on my channel, so I will leave it linked on the screen as well as down below so you can go and check that out if you haven't read the series yet and you want to know more about what it's about, or if you just want to know my thoughts on the first book, definitely go and check that review you out. I'll give just a brief synopsis of the world in general. We follow around our main character named Kel, who is what is called an Antari, and essentially he is able to travel through different parallel versions of London. There are four different Londons, Grey London, White London, Black London, and Red London, and Grey London is essentially just like our London with no magic, and the other Londons all have magic, or magic has corrupted them completely. And this book takes place four months after the events of the first book, and we follow around the same group of characters characters as they have to deal with some more magical situations and get in a lot more trouble. That's all I can really say in terms of a non-spoiler section for this video because this is the second book in the series, so if you haven't read this book yet and you don't want to be spoiled for anything that happens in A Gathering of Shadows, I highly recommend you click away now, go and read this book, and then come back and discuss it with me because I loved this book and I have so much to say. So bye to all of you non-spoilery people, and for all of you spoilery people, let's get into talking about this this book. Okay, so first off, I really liked A Darker Shade of Magic. I thought that it was such a great first book to a series, and I also liked that it concluded like with a solid ending, like that could have been a standalone book, but it left off like with enough space for the series to continue, and I really liked the way that it concluded. So because of that ending, I had no idea how this book was going to go. I didn't know anything about what the plot was going to be about, and I just had no expectations. And then as I started reading it, I realized that it was the whole like Essentosh, the game, and it kind of reminded me a little bit of Throne of Glass, and that's where I want to start this review, just because I have a lot of comparisons and things I want to say. So I won't spoil any of Throne of Glass for any of you who haven't read it, but the first book is essentially about Selena Sardothian as she is thrust into this competition between assassins so the king can pick who his assassin is going to be. And the whole first book really just revolves around this competition. Petition, and the plot of this one kind of reminded me of that, not in a way that this was like unoriginal compared to Throne of Glass, but I felt like this was everything that Throne of Glass was trying to be, but a thousand times better. <laughs> like full shade to Throne of Glass, like I have no shame, I don't like that series anymore, but this was just like what I wanted that to be, and going into it and not knowing like anything about it and finding out that it was going to be like these games, I started to get like really skeptical because I didn't like that whole plot in Throne of Glass, but this just did it so well, and the games actually served a purpose, and I was just so blown away because I was just like, wow, this is what happens when that trope is used, but it's done well, and I was just so happy. <laughs> okay, but moving on from Throne of Glass, that's all I had to say about that because I just noticed that comparison, and I was just so happy with how well this book did that same kind of theme, and I'm glad that I now have a good connotation with that like game challenge competition trope thing. <laughs> so I'm gonna try and go through the rest of this by talking about each of the characters and their plot lines because I feel like that's the best way I can organize this. So starting off with Lila, since the book starts off with Lila, I was so happy to see her on this ship exploring the world and going out and doing what she's always wanted to do. And then we have her on Alucard's ship and that scene where Alucard ends up kissing her and they have like that whole moment, I was actually screaming because I was so upset by this. First thing you need to know about me and this series is that I ship Kel and Lila so much. Like, they have become a new OTP. It's really, really intense. I have a lot of feelings about it, and I will defend them to my grave. So when I saw that Alucard and her, like, had a moment, I was not about it. I was not happy, and I was ready to punch him in the face. <laughs> but then she pushes him off and is pretty mad at him, and then he gets mad at her later, so like they had their whole conflict and it didn't end up being a thing. But like for the beginning of this book, I was sincerely worried because I thought we were gonna end up with some love triangle or something, and I was about like ready to quit. I was not about that. <laughs> but then 
as we go along in the plot, we find out about this past relationship between Alucard and Rai, and I knew it. I literally knew it, and I was so happy. The minute that Rai got upset when he saw Alucard's name on the list for the Essentosh, I knew it was because he had some sort of history with him, and he just like didn't want to see him again, and I was so happy when that was confirmed, when he like came into Rai's bedroom and they start making out, and that, that I do ship, 100% do ship it. It is so great and so cute. It totally redeemed Alucard for me, and I am so ready for more of it in book three. Like, I cannot wait. I'm really hoping that we get some more of Alucard's perspective in the last book, because I wanna know more about his relationship with Rai and why it all went south and what all the problems were, and I want it to be fixed, and I want them to be happy together. So hopefully we get some more of that in the third book. But I was so happy when we found out about that in here. It was just, it was everything I didn't know I wanted, but now I'm so happy that we have it. Okay, so I'm all over the place, but going on to Rai, I was so happy that we got some more of his character in this book because he was completely lacking from the first book. We got a little bit about him, but I don't even remember getting his actual perspective in that first book. But in this book, we do get his perspective and we get to see more in his head and the way that this whole connection with Kel is affecting him and how upset he is and how much he just really wants to help his kingdom. There's so much more depth to Rai's character in this book and it's so wonderful to see that because he was so great and funny in the first book and I really really enjoyed him but in this book it just added a whole other dimension to him. It made him so much more real and now he's one of my precious children and I will protect him to the end of the world because he's so pure and perfect. <laughs> and then of course we have Kel who is also my precious child because he is just going through so much right now and he deserves the world and I want him to be happy, but he's so far from it right now. The thing I really liked about this book specifically was getting to see Kel come into his powers. And I remember the scene where it's like during the Essentosh and I don't remember who Kel is fighting, but he's um, Kamarov at that time and he's fighting someone. And it's the moment where Lila realizes that he's Kel and not Kamarov or that Kel and Kamarov are the same person. Um, and she notices that he's holding back so much even though he's fighting so well and winning. And I loved that she commented on that because you get to see how powerful Kel truly is and I don't even think he realizes how powerful he is and I'm so excited for that to be explored even more in the last book. I want to see the limits of his power. I want to know how strong he truly is and I want him to be happy with who he is and happy with his power and confident in it because right now he's struggling with it because he's struggling with the whole loyalty to his family thing and it's just all too much. And then of course we have his relationship with Lila which like I mentioned I ship so much. It means so much to me and I love them and this book just tore my heart to pieces. It was so great. There's so many mentions of how much he misses her and how much he's longing for her. He sees her everywhere when she's there and when she's not there and it's just so wonderful because you can actually see how much he cares about someone aside from Rai because Rai is like the only person in his life that he truly cares about. And getting to see him care about someone else, even a fraction of that amount or even as much as he cares about Rai is so wonderful. It just makes me so happy because I know that there's some happiness there for Kel and I want him to have that, but I don't know if it'll be possible with Lila because Lila is so Lila and so stubborn. And I just, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen but it's killing me in the best way possible. I love the scene where they were fighting and he realizes that she's actually Lila and not um, whoever it was that she was impersonating to be in the Essentosh. And then the scene where she ends up going to the ball because they both realize that the, they were both like hiding as other people and they see each other and they dance and then they kiss and my heart melts. It was so perfect and beautiful. And then of course after that immediately they fight but like we can't all have nice things all the time. <laughs> and then of course we have Lila's character development in here as well. She goes from being so stubborn and so headstrong to in this book, we finally see a little bit more of her vulnerability. And we see that as much as she says she doesn't wanna settle down anywhere, she definitely does have a little bit of that longing to her. And she feels that and you can see it with Kel and with Rai and Red London. And she can see herself here, which she's never 
never had before and it scares her and it's just so great getting to see her go through all of this. It's heartbreaking of course because she's struggling so much but it's also incredible to see her character development and I am so so anxious for where she's going to go in this last book. I have no idea what's going to happen. I'm just like completely baffled. I have no guesses, no theories. I don't know what she's going to do. I don't know what she is. I'm like 99% certain she's an Antari, but I also don't know what she's going to do because V.E. Schwab just like throws out plot twists all the time and I can never expect what she's doing. So she might not be Antara at all. Who knows? But I'm just hoping that it's something. My theory that she's Antara especially comes from the fact that she has this glass eye, which I don't even remember if she's told Kel about this yet, but she has one glass eye and all that could mean to me is that whoever her parents were took out her black eye because they didn't want her to have that mark of being an Antara. So I don't know. I don't know what she is, but I just want her to be happy. That's all I want for her. And then of course we have Holland's character, which I knew he wasn't dead. I just like, I could tell if I don't see like an actual dead body and there's like no funeral, even then, I just like never trust when a character is dead until the series has ended. Even then, if like the author is like, oh, I'm writing a spinoff series. I'm like, okay, well that character is probably still alive. So I just knew that Holland wasn't dead. And getting to see his parts in White London was so interesting. And a lot of people really love Holland's character. I don't really feel any sort of attachment towards him, but I really liked getting to see him struggle with that dark magic thing from Black London. I don't even remember what it's called. And then at the very end when he's like struggling and he's possibly dead and I don't even know what's going on at this point or where this is headed, but I'm really, really excited to see what's going to happen to White London and to Black London and to Kel and this dark magic thing that is going to possibly destroy the entirety of Red London. Who knows what's happening? We have Kel with this demonic collar around his neck that is potentially going to kill him and also potentially kill Rai since they're connected. And then Alucard just like trying to help Rai in Red London while Lila's in the middle of London's and Kel is in White London. So everyone is like all over the place and nothing is okay right now. I'm not okay right now and I need this third book immediately. But yeah, that just about covers all of my thoughts on A Gathering of Shadows by V.E. Schwab. I'm sorry if this video was like all over the place, but I just had so many thoughts and feelings about it and I couldn't like cohesively put them all into like one organized thought process because nothing about this was organized. It was all over the place and it was really intense. So my feelings were really intense. I ended up giving this book a five out of five stars. I really, really enjoyed it. It was so much fun for me and I am so attached to these characters. So that's definitely why I enjoyed it so much. So let me know in the comments down below all of your thoughts on A Gathering of Shadows. I would love to continue discussing with you. If there's anything I didn't mention in this video that really stood out to you that you want to talk about, definitely let me know about any of that. Or if there are things that I mentioned in this video that you agree with or disagree with, talk to me about any of it. I could talk about this book for days. If you'd like to follow me on any of my social media, all of my links are in the description box as always. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in my next video. Bye!